With all the flashy and fancy weapons that the Angels of Zerman update put out, the Aeolac kinda went a bit unnoticed, a bit flying under the radar. Everybody's talking about the Alternox and evolving weapons, but this one? This one is one of the better weapons of the update. And today, my friends, we're gonna be diving deeper into this primary weapon. I'm gonna have a cheap build, something affordable that most Tenno and casual Tenno can use as a jumping off point. But fear not, we also got the end game setup with prime mods, galvanized mods, we're gonna be taking it to steel path, basically the works, and we're gonna round everything out with warframe buffs or synergies. That said though, please bear in mind that my building guides usually take a more no player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Aeolac. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, just a couple of our usual free shots. The Aeolac is a Orkin era Grenier weapon, that's why it looks a bit more fancy and all whatnot. And it also has a semi-fancy reload animation, it's gonna be ejecting the nozzle and replacing it. Have a look. Hey, not bad at all. Now when it comes to the fire modes, you got two of them. Primary fire mode is your basic assault rifle affair, but with a twist. This one doesn't fire mere hit scan bullets, <laughs> it just fires projectiles. So you will have to deal with the travel time of these projectiles. Thankfully there is no projectile drop off, so leading your targets is still a thing, but it's not that bad. Now the recoil on this one is a tad on the jumpy side, so I would recommend you reduce that recoil to increase the usability. It's not 100% needed, as you can see at full fire rate this does stabilize, it's not a big deal, but it's just annoying to me personally in gameplay. Now the magazine is 40, the reload is on 2 seconds, so it's not too high, not too low, and the fire rate is quite nice, so you will be reloading quite often with a weapon. It has one more trick up its sleeve. In secondary fire mode, if you gently touch your baton, it will automatically charge and fire an explosive projectile, a grenade of sorts. Now even though that explosion might not look it, it looks really feeble and really small, it actually has a range of 7 meters, believe it or not. It's quite big, that's what she said. Anyway, 7 meters with a drop off of 90%, so unfortunately the drop off is quite high. Now the beauty about this secondary fire mode is the fact that you can hold your shot in, just like you would with a Lanka. So essentially I'm holding my charge in, I'm jumping around, I'm bullet jumping and I'm releasing when I am good and ready. You can tap and it will automatically discharge, but of course that can lead to premature <laughs> firing. <laughs> I'm sorry. But you can also hold the charge in and of course that explosion will be consuming 10 ammo per shot. So for your magazine, you're going to be getting 4 explosions, then you need to reload. And that's pretty much it for functionality. Let's jump into stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is gonna be 60 out of 60, and if yours comes with only 30 out of 30, you jump into actions, you install the Orkin Catalyst. Is it worth it on the Aeolac? Honestly, so far from this update, this is one of the more worth it weapons, so I would recommend you give this one a spin. Especially if you enjoy quirky, cool assault rifles, or assault rifles with a twist. Now my Aeolac has 4 Forma in them, this is not a heavy Forma weapon, definitely not, it comes with 1 V Polarity by default, 1 Madurai, I recommend you slap 1 in additionally. What, what does the wiki says? Wiki says also Vazarin Polarity, but I don't remember seeing a Vazarin Polarity on this one. Might have been in the Excellus slot. Speaking about the Excellus slot, should you unlock this one? Yes, absolutely. I would recommend you go with Stabilizer. It simply makes the weapon feel 10 times better in actual gameplay, but you may have some ammo issues, so Vigilante Supplies is always a good option. Pick your poison. When it comes to the arcane slot, of course, you're gonna be going to primary deadhead if you're tired of the whole slash and viral shenanigans with hunter munitions. If you wanna go for a more raw damage approach, if you wanna put on as much raw damage as you can, go with the 90 mods and all whatnot, primary deadhead is definitely the way to go. Primary merciless, however, is still gonna be the way to go for the meta approach that is gonna be viral slash and dexterity if you're gonna be using it in tandem with your melee weapon. The accuracy on this one is gonna be 100, it's not bad, of course, as you saw before, it is a pinpoint accurate weapon if you work around the recoil. Fire rate is gonna be 6 with a magazine of 40, reload of 2 seconds, it's usable. Honestly, in normal gameplay, the weapon feels perfectly balanced for the primary fire mode, which this details. Ah, punch through, 1 meter. Now, there's not a whole lot you can do with a single meter, but it does get through the Grenier shield, dude. You know, the guy with the riot shield, that's the guy. Trigger automatic riven disposition of nada, nothing, only one out of five. This is a brand new weapon and this is Digital Extremes policy on brand new weapons. The Olac is a strong weapon, but in my opinion, not as strong as to get only one 
out of 5 Riven Dispo. Now the damage you see here only applies to the automatic rifle mode and we do not have the details on the explosion, we have them over on the wiki, I will read them to you. Unfortunately the Angels of Zataman update has been quite buggy to say the least. Critical chance 21% and a 2.3x critical multiplier, that is good. Decent critical chance as a base with above average critical multi status of 43% and you got the whole array of impact, puncture, slash and a touch of radiation on this one. Not bad, not bad. Now let's talk about the explosion which isn't shown here. Again the range is 7 meters, you're looking at a drop off of 90%. The damage of the explosion is going to be 789 according to the wiki. It's blast damage by default. Now you need to keep in mind you have two sources of damage when it comes to the secondary fire mode. You have the projectile physically making contact with a target and the explosion itself. That's two sources of damage, two sources of potentially applying a proc to your target. You should also know that that projectile making contact with a target has a guaranteed impact proc. But before you get any wild ideas, it's this projectile when it touches the target, not the actual explosion. So hunter munitions is still gonna be the way to go instead of internal bleeding. Let's see what else is there to say. Uh, critical chance, critical damage is the same, 21% and 2.3x critical multiplier. Status chance, 33% according again to the wiki. We will probably get an update and they will add these details over here. And I do believe, my friends, that's pretty much it for the weapon stats and functionality. Let's have a look at a more new player, casual player friendly build. Damage duration, multi shot with split chamber, critical chance and critical damage for the use of critical delay and vital sense. We got hunter munitions on the weapon because it's bloody mandatory and the 260 60 mods, malignant force and rhyme rounds. Now if you're newer coming into the game and you don't know where to farm these, rhyme rounds is obtained from doing spy missions, malignant force is obtained from corrupted vor in the void. You will need both of them. So happy farming. If you don't have enough endo, leave two or three balls from the top on serration. It's not going to make that big of a difference. And we're also going to be using stabilizer in the weapon excellent slot. If you don't have the necessary resources to unlock this one, forget about it and go as is. In the last slot, now this is an option slot. If you're more of a veteran and you got prime shred, just prime shred. Just prime shred it and thank me later. If you don't have enough space on it, you can do something like so. Honestly, fire rate and 2.2 meters worth of punch rule going to 3.2 total. That's going to be absolutely insane. But let's be honest, my friends, new players don't really have punch rule. <laughs> well, they don't have prime shred, that is. You can use the normal version, right? So if you don't have the prime version, you can simply use the normal shred. A lot of players love this one. 30% fire rate with 1.2 meters worth of punch through. Now, my recommendation is to either go for more multi-shot, cheap mod, super cheap, 60% multi-shot, man, you cannot go wrong with this one, so that's what we're going to be testing today. And don't forget in your Excel slot if you have room for stabilizer. We're going to do one really quick test like this so you can see what the weapon can perform, and then I'll show you one more test. Changing a single mod on the setup, how big of a difference it can make in this cheapo setup. Before we go, however, keep in mind that any Warframe buffs can skew the test results and make a weapon seem a lot more powerful than it actually is, including the Madurai passive, my friends. Phoenix Talents, which does work. Activate something else, like, I don't know, Naramon or anything else that doesn't skew your test results. We're gonna be adding Warframe buffs and Warframe synergies later. We're gonna go for straight headshots and we're gonna be testing both the fire modes as per usual with a slash build, 50% hit it, and then watch the slashes completely annihilate your target. And my friends, this is one heavy hitter for a normal cheap old build. Look at that, 10 vitals on my target and a whole bunch of slash as well. Plenty of crits on the weapon, even though it has only a 21% base, that's gonna be seven slashes by the time you reach 10 vital procs. You cannot go over 10 vital procs. Yeah? So once you got 10 vital procs, you should stop. There's the 10 vital procs, there's the seven slashes and the target is slowly and surely bleeding away. Almost there, almost no cigar. Now let's test the secondary fire mode. Of course, you're gonna be needing at least 10 ammo to shoot this one. Slash has been applied, no vital though. If you get a vital proc, you can even get one shot on these targets. And that's the value of the explosion. A bigger bada boom, definitely, but you gotta keep in mind that if you don't pepper your targets with a whole lot of projectiles, you're not gonna be getting as consistent procs. Obvious as that might sound. One more time for the explosion. I'm not gonna go for headshots on the explosion because I believe it's not realistic. I believe that most players are gonna be playing like this with the explosion. Take a look at that. Not bad, not bad. Again, if you get the correct procs, the weapon will absolutely annihilate. Take a look. Slashes, virals, all of that good stuff. Now, of course, my friends, we can definitely change a couple of things up and make the weapon a whole lot more powerful than this. 
Before we do that, however, might I have one last little suggestion. In the final slot, you can add one more 60-60 mod. For example, you can have Viral with Heat on the weapon. That's definitely not a bad idea. You would have Viral, Heat and Radiation. Not bad, right? But why don't you try a little bit of Fire Rate? Fire Rate honestly makes almost any weapon feel a bit more usable, especially now that we're using Stabilizer. Vile Acceleration is my go-to, 90% Fire Rate. It takes away 15% of your damage, but it's not really all that relevant. It's 15% away of serration. And try the weapon like so. It's not gonna affect the charge rate though. That 0.3 charge rate that you have on your big bada boom explosion, it doesn't seem to affect that, so do bear that one in mind. If you don't know where to farm mods such as Vile Acceleration, which are corrupted mods, link in the cards right now for a full and detailed guide on it. You will need Vile Acceleration, you're gonna be needing Critical Delay, you're gonna be needing yourself a whole lot of corrupted mods if you don't have them. Not only for your weapon builds, but also for your Warframe build. Now, one more time with Fire Rate, take a look at the difference. It just feels better, man. That's just like feels better. This is how an assault rifle is supposed to feel. Absolutely love wild acceleration on most assault rifles, so therefore I'm gonna be recommending it to you. Fantastic. Keep boom, boom, boom. Whole lot of slash, whole lot of vital. Now it's true, if you overdo it with fire rate, you will destroy your ammo efficiency. So there is that to bear in mind. Again, it doesn't seem to affect the explosion charge up. It still seems to be stuck on about 0.3 seconds. So do bear that one in mind. Enough, this concludes the new player-ish or casual player portion of the guide. What we're gonna be doing next is amping up everything with everything we have at our disposal. We got Arcane, we got... Ew. Prime mods. We also got Galvanized mods, so this is how a maxed up setup will look. It's a version of it, you can go in a number of different ways. I would recommend you stick to this. We got Galvanized Chamber, we got even a Bane mod instead of the Flat Damage mod. Keep in mind that flat damage is still gonna be the way to go up until level 300, 400 when it comes to the AOLAC. Past that, I would suggest you swap in a Bane mod. Where actually are you gonna see level 300, 400 or above? Well, if you stay enough in an endurance run, that's not what most players do in Warframe. The very large majority don't care about such things, but there are some that do. So for you guys, here you go, a Bane mod. We're gonna be repeating the same test as before. And that's without galvanized stuff. Now the galvanized stuff kicked in and my primary weapon arcane. Now the more I shoot, the more I stack, the more this weapon goes absolutely insane. Stacking like a champion. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. Take a look. Absolutely destroyed. So you see my friends, this is the power if you have all the available upgrades and we're not even using warframe buffs right now mirage is not affecting the weapon in any way whatsoever now we're gonna repeat the, the test really quick i want to show you the value of the explosion as well more multi-shot and all whatnot the explosion does hit hard okay that's not in question the problem is that drop off is way 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 too aggressive at 90 percent that's why you kill the guy that you hit initially look but the other guy barely gets touched Sometimes, even if it is super close, that 90% fall off is a bit of a doozy. Now, my friends, this is performance in a controlled environment in the simulacrum, but how does this one look in Steel Path gameplay? Well, welcome to the void, my friends. Now, let's see what the AOLA can do. I got the Panzer Volpi Volpi with me. I would recommend you do that as well. And if you have the Panzer Volpi Phyla with you, you can forget about building Viral on the weapon. You can build something like Corrosive and Heat. Oh, look, a Corrupted Heavy Goon level. 133 absolutely annihilated no problem whatsoever you get slash you get vital and this is the power of the weapon no problem whatsoever but what did you expect it is quite the powerful weapon is it not you guys can test it in the new game mode as well it's gonna be quite effective wow goodbye ancient healer fleximus neximus not even an excellent now of course let's try the explosion out as well not bad not bad at all beautiful as before, if you can't go for a headshot, go for a headshot, but if you can't go for a headshot, forget about it and simply pepper your targets. It's no problem whatsoever. Just a couple of shots in this corrupted heavy goon, steel path, 131, and absolutely annihilated. This is the power of the AOLAC. And I honestly don't believe I need to show you more than this. The weapon is hella strong. Mm -hmm. Hella strong is putting it a little bit too much. It's a good primary weapon. It's a good assault rifle in Warframe. One that can handle steel path without any issue whatsoever. The problem with it is, well, I'll leave that for the conclusion. Before we get to that, there's one more thing which I want to show you. 
And finally, Warframe buffs and synergies, my friends. When it comes to buffs and synergies, there's nobody more powerful than Lady Mirage Prime. Corrosive projection against heavily armored targets. If you're not going to be fighting heavily armored targets, then you don't need this one. And if your build calls for, I don't know, whatever you want. Loot detector, uh, shield disruption, rejuvenation, or whatever else. Simply go for the aura of your choosing. If the aura is that relevant to you, please don't forget about Coaction Drift. When it comes to arcanes, these are a lot more impactful. Normally, I recommend you keep one arcane at least for your Warframe build. Your armor, your energize, or whatever else. Arcane Avenger synergizes beautifully well with this weapon. You're going to be getting yourself 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. Bonus additive after stacking on top of what you already have. That simply means it doesn't care about the base critical chance of the weapon. Now, this one will apply to your primary, secondary, and to your melee at the exact same time. So, it's probably the most powerful offensive arcane in Warframe. Now, you can also go with Rage. This is more flat damage. You don't need more flat damage right now. You got plenty of it. But if you want even a bigger, big bada boom, you can go for this one. Another option is to go for Fire Rate. But again, you're looking at a magazine of only 40 and a reload of 2 seconds unmodded. So, you know what? Might as well not overdo it. This is normally where your Energize would go or whatever else you prefer. Companion buffs, you can go with the Panzer Volpophila, in which case you should make corrosive and heat on your weapon if you're going to be getting your viral procs from it. But keep in mind that the procs from the Volpophila aren't really as reliable as your own weapon. Another option is to go for Carrier and or Carrier Prime or whatever other Sentinel you have at your disposal. Simply make sure that on that little Sentinel's weapon... You have the Vigilante mods, Offense, Supplies, Fervor, and Armaments. If you're already using Supplies on the weapon, do not use it here. 20% chance to enhance critical hits from primary weapons. Now, some players say it's the same as having crit. It's not. The mechanic works completely differently, but it is good to have. Now, we're going to be spawning in Corrupted Heavy Goons as high as we can. Level 165, we're going to be unpausing them so they can hit me and I can get my glorious, absolutely glorious Waiting in power for Mirage and her free ability for an absolutely sky-high Eclipse buff. And one more time, for the best animation in Warframe, silence please, the ever so lovely clones. You know what? I'm going to take it one step further and activate Madurai Void Strike because that wasn't enough Warframe boss. Now have a quick gander at what the Aeolac can do, fully stacked out with Warframe buffs, galvanized mods, arcanes, essentially the works. It can be one hell of a primary weapon and it definitely packs a punch. Is it one of the best primary weapons in the game? No, not necessarily, but if you're looking for a solid assault rifle with a bit of a twist on it, then look no further than this one. The problem with the Aeolac is the fact that it's a little bit plain Jane in comparison to all the flashy stuff that came out with the Angels of Zataman. I mean, the Alternox looks amazing. At least it looks amazing. And you also got the evolving weapons which everybody's talking about. Review on those pretty soon. But the Aeolac can hold its own with no problem whatsoever. And I do recommend this primary weapon. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, share, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any feedback for me, I would love to read that in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. Would you be interested in seeing, I don't know, a guide on evolving weapons? I'm currently maxing everything out so I can fully build them. Let me know in the comment section down below. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, link in the cards right now for our Patreon. Do consider it. But until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.